continuing my hike into the castle. And the castle is a region here in Arizona where the rocks just go straight up in jagged spires. It looks like towers and battlements and ramparts. I'm kind of outside the really good region of the castle and so I'm gonna hike that way and see. It's just after 9 o'clock, about 9.15 a.m. and I'm gonna see what kind of fun I can get into. These vultures were literally circling around me just a minute ago. They were, they were hovering above me, just circling around like they really think I'm about to die. That's where I think I want to go. The thing is, I might find water down there in some places, but hiking would be a lot easier and a lot faster up on top of the ridge. So as long as I have water, even though it just feels really hot, you know, because the sun's baking on you, there's no shade, it's not even summer yet. Literally, when you look at the vultures circling around you, you think maybe they might know what they're talking about. Kidding. The uh, mountain sort of forced me down, and once I was down at the bottom, the creek bed's just right over the right. By the end, I'm so tired of the sun just beating down on me. I decided I want the creek bed where there's some shade every now and then. They're uh, pacing me. <laughs> Vultures are just watching me from the distance, kind of. Not overhead exactly, but just they're there close by, just watching to see if I keel over. Right behind me are the gates of hell, ladies and gentlemen. We're going through. Apparently interrupted a, an eagle's helm. I see another one up there. Ooh. They sure don't like me here. I'll tell you that. I'm disturbing their peace. I love their home though. They picked a nice spot. This massive cottonwood tree is hope that there's actually water somewhere along this ravine that's on the surface. Uh, to take advantage of the water that's here right now, you'd actually literally have to dig a well. And if you're really thirsty, seriously. I have a little bit of water left, and the reason I'm really interested in finding water is because I want to keep hiking. I've got lots more time left in the day, and I've got that much water left. So that would make for an uncomfortable trip back to my car, even if I went now. So I'm hoping to get lucky. So we're, we're basically in the castle right now. And uh, I'm going to keep looking. This is really one of those cases of water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Because <laughs> you see the evidence of the water everywhere, that it's under the surface, but you have to dig 
and who knows how, how far, you know. And the last thing I want to do right now is dig down to get the water. Okay, now the search is starting to pay off. This I could use with iodine tablets. I'm going to keep going and see if I can get to fresher water. You can see people have camped in this cave white people if this was wow it's cool in here it's really nice in here if that was a little Indian wall it would be hardened with uh, clay mud but this is smoke on the ceiling so Native Americans probably used this cave a lot way back when you know, maybe it was just hunters, maybe maybe a tribe lived here, you know, and if I spent enough time I might even find their uh, you know, remains of their town, who knows. This is what you would need for a permanent place to stay, water. There's food out there, but you need a place to come in, you know, in the shelter, in the cool. And really this is 15 degrees cooler in here than it is <laughs> out there. When it comes to living or staying in caves, people may have concerns about the rocks falling on there. Right here is a loose rock, right? There's some on the sides. But when you see this ancient uh, smoke on the ceiling, this smoke has probably been here for hundreds of years. So that means that those rocks haven't fallen in that time so it kind of helps you give an idea get an idea of uh, how stable the ceiling is there's little bugs in the water no dead animals there's even a dragonfly Tails. These are mixed signs. The water is not poison. And you see this algae on there, you know it's kind of polluted. So, to do the iodine tablets, the whole process of purifying the water takes longer than 35 minutes. If you strictly follow the directions, which I'm assuming you should, uh, it's 35 minutes plus adding the tablets to neutralize the taste and color of the iodine. It takes that long just to kill all the bacteria. Of course, if I was boiling it, it doesn't take long at all to get water to boil. And as soon as the water is boiling, it's safe to drink. You've just killed all the bacteria. I fill one of my uh, herb bags with the water first so I can pour that through the handkerchief into my container. There's not very much in there that has to be filtered out. But... Okay, so the next step then is to pour the water through the bandana to filter out all the particles. So it's supposed to be two tablets for a quart. It has a marker right here that says 32 ounces. let it sit now for five minutes with the lid loosely attached. Okay, five minutes has passed, so before tightening the lid, shake it well, so you're getting the water kind of into the uh, threads, which is what you want. Now tighten it, and now 
wait for 30 minutes. All right, so you cannot add the, we call it PA plus tablets that neutralize the taste until you've waited 30 minutes after, after putting the uh, iodine tablets in there. <clears throat> if you were to put the PA plus in there at the same time as the iodine tablets or in under 30 minutes, then the iodine tablets won't actually work. There can still be harmful organisms in the water. So the iodine tablets have been in the water for 30 minutes. Now it's time to add the PA Plus tablets. All right, shake. Wait another three minutes. It's not necessary for these tablets to dissolve completely. They're really just for the purpose of neutralizing the iodine taste. I keep these at the bottom of my water pouch and the uh, water bottle just goes right on top of them so those vultures are following me now they didn't know me swimming pool all right oh look honeysuckles One of the benefits of using the iodine tablets instead of boiling water is now I've filled that container for the second time and uh, put more iodine tablets in it and this time I'm just doing it while I'm moving whereas if I was going to boil it I'd have to stop, fill the fire, you know, all that stuff, wait for my pan to cool, although the next Essentially 45 minutes, I won't be able to drink anything. One thing about the castle is it's full of little caves in the rocks. This thorn bush is really good. It's got very pale, kind of yellow orange berries. They have very little of that, that bitter tannic acid taste. That thorn bush was really good. It was like uh, eating a bunch of grapes, <laughs> except with a lot more tannic acid. So after I've eaten this whole bunch of grapes, so to speak. <clears throat> now comes the dry mouth, and coming to the rescue is a choya. Now I can do the flowers. I can do these little things right here. So now I'm going to eat a lot of that to counterbalance the dry mouth. So with the choya flowers and those little tiny, I don't know, call them anemones, do for you is they become really slimy in your mouth which is the opposite of what the thorn bush berries do which is dry your mouth out after you chew them up just leave them in your mouth don't swallow them for a while and if you just 
you know, have a lot of that in your mouth and you just hold it there. It makes, uh, makes your mouth feel like you've got lots of saliva and it counterbalances the dry mouth thing. Now I can imagine how God would have thought of something that brilliant. Hey, these people living here are going to have this problem, so let's give them this solution. I don't know how uh, atheists who believe in blind evolution even account for this, but they've got their reasons because they don't want to believe in God any more than a religious person wants to believe there isn't a God. I just believe that nature is brilliant. And there's a mind behind that. It's now just after 4.15. Start at 9.15. I've been going for about uh, just slightly over seven hours. And since it's 4.15, the sun goes down at about 7.30. <laughs> That means the way back I'm going to be doing about half of that in the dark. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to be as refreshed as I can before I go. <laughs> a wet shirt will definitely keep me cool for a while. Well, it's time to move. Well, isn't this just Americana? Dad sent some light clouds and a breeze too to help with this return trip. in life very much right now <laughs> my car is behind me uh, over the mountains uh, somewhere over there <laughs> and I've got an hour and a half till dark I'm totally worn out and I just want to crawl into this cave here and go to sleep you know Except the problem is, somebody, the guy with my car and, well, with my phone who's doing my business, will wonder why I didn't make it back, because I have no phone signal, you know. They say, hey, I'm staying the night again. I don't have that option right now because I have no signal here. shortage of light. I'm taking this riverbed that I will be able to clearly see in the dark. I'm just going to follow it upstream because I know that eventually it's going to get to the road and all I have to do then is choose the right direction to walk along the road. I think left.
a mining claim here. There's the marker. Okay, well that wash winds up through that canyon and then splits off into a smaller wash here. So I'm going to see if I can follow this mining road. If it leads back to the main road, it's going the right direction so far. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I am so relieved. You have no idea. I won't be uh, hunting around for landmarks in pitch black darkness. <laughs> and my shoes are completely shot. Yeah. Alright, I'm at my car. It's almost not quite 9 o'clock. That was almost not quite a 12 hour hike. A little closer to 11 and a half.